12 October 2021 Jackson County Commission meeting is called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone here. Uh, we have a number of items on the agenda tonight, both in the new business section as well as the uh, work session. At this time, I'd like Mrs. Johnson to please call the roll to establish a quorum. Mr. Rich? Mr. Venable? Present. Mr. Wagner? Present. We do have a quorum. At this time, if everyone would please stand, I'll ask Mr. Porter, our county attorney, to offer our invocation and Commissioner Buckner to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. God, our Father, we're, we're humbled to be in your presence today. Each and every day, we're thankful for the blessings you give us individually and as a community, a wonderful and great place to live. We're thankful for that. Thankful for all of these commissioners that give time uh, from their schedules to uh, dedicate to the public service we're thankful for them and for all others that uh, they're employed by the public to help us uh, get along on an everyday basis so thank you for these blessings play your watch over us and guide us every day in christ's name amen amen, amen. attention salute pledge i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get to our agenda, at this time, I would like to turn the floor over to our county attorney and I call for a public hearing on the vacating of a portion of County Road 471. Mr. Porter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are scheduled to have a public hearing on the request of uh, Edward Allen trailer to vacate the portion of County Road 471 has been pending before this body for uh, some time. Uh, so this is the public hearing for that purpose. Uh, the, uh, the records reflect that Mr. Trailer owns all of the property on both sides of that portion of County Road 471 that he is seeking to vacate and no one will be inconvenienced. It is a dead end road. It dead ends into Mr. Trailer's property. Um, so it would be an appropriate road to be vacated over to him. He has agreed to maintain a turnaround uh, so that the public can turn around there where the new uh, end of the road will be. Um, so, but if anybody has any questions, uh, we've received no comments. Uh, no, nobody has objected that I know of uh, to this. So uh, floor is open for questions uh, from the commission. Yes, sir. I have a matter of record, do we need a sign-in sheet for everybody? It's right there. Being passed around, even as we speak. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I have to think it. I mean, yeah. We normally done that. Any yeah. other questions from commissioners? Yeah, I, I'll explain about the signing sheet. We ask everybody to sign so that we have evidence that there was a public hearing, and showing that some some people of the public did show up. So thank you, Mr. Venable, for that. Um, so we'll just sign that. And the, the, the floor would be open to the public if the public has any questions. Okay. Then that's, okay. that's all we have. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Yes, sir. At this time, uh, we will uh, uh, approve our agenda for today's meeting, uh, the 12th of October, 2021. Uh, I would need a motion to approve the agenda with the following ad uh, to the agenda, and that would be a motion in a new business section to approve vacation, vacating of a portion of County Road 471. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda with the added motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve tonight's agenda with the addition of vacating the portion of 471. Do we have a second? Aye. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The agenda is approved with the addition. Do we have any awards and presentations tonight? Okay, none. Uh, public comment, I know we d we have at least one. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Petty uh, is here to give us an update on the Heritage Center. Thank you for being here. Ms. Petty, if again, you've been through this process before, if you understand, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Okay. If you will state your name. Jennifer Petty. And you are representing? The Heritage Center. Okay, South those. Center. Well, thank you very much. Those are just to make sure that we have that properly recorded. Okay. Uh, you have five minutes for public comment. We okay. may can grant you additional time. Okay, thank you. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Petty, the director of the Spotsboro Jackson Heritage Center. 
I'm here again and excited to tell you that we have started moving into the new exhibit center in preparation for our opening in two weeks. I also want to let you know about all of the progress going on at the Heritage Center, including public accessibility, organization, and research expansion. Most of the exhibits from upstairs in the Brown Proctor House have been moved into the exhibit center and are now all handicap accessible. These include exhibits of pictures and artifacts from Scottsboro and Jackson County's historic past. The movement of exhibits and furniture has allowed for planned reorganization of the Brown Proctor House. The Walter B. Hammer Family Research Library will be modified as an old classic library where I will have my desk readily to greet guests as they come in. In addition, movement has created an opportunity for the center's library to have a research room annex. This is in conjunction with an offer for the works of some of Jackson County's historians to be housed at the center. We are hopeful for other collections as well. Employees of the center, along with volunteers, will index these collections to make them easily accessible to the public for research. Returning to the new exhibit center, we are planning more exhibits and other upgrades to the facilities, including Sage Town, so that we can showcase the rich history of Scottsboro and Jackson County. We are excited about these future events. In closing, I would like to invite you all to the opening of the new exhibit center. It's taking place Sunday, October 17th from 1 to 4 p.m. Light refreshments will be served. Thank you, and I hope to see you all on October 17th. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you. comments from commissioners? No, just just excited about the event. Looking forward to it. Um, you know, uh, great events like this are, are needed to showcase our, our wonderful past and, and, and carry it, bridge us to our very bright future. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. At this time, do we have any other uh, public comments? Okay. Thank you. This time we'll move into the new business portion of our meeting. We have a number of motions to uh, act on tonight. Uh, first, as always, uh, do I have a motion to adopt the minutes as provided uh, from the September 14th, 2021 public hearing and the September 27th, 2021 meeting? Those minutes are in your packet. I'll make the motion to combine and adopt both of those. I have a motion, a second? No, second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Secondly, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, just uh, completed public hearing, do I have a motion to approve vacating of a portion of County Road 471? Yeah, I make the motion that we approve the vacating portion of County Road 471. We have a motion, a second? i second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we uh, have a, a, a the previous discussions that we have had. Uh, we have a motion today to, to consider authorizing the county attorney to pursue a declaratory judgment action regarding the application of the Omnibus Pay Act to the probate judge and related issues. Do I have a motion? I make that motion. We have a motion, a second? I'll second the yep. motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. In a previous uh, uh, meeting that we had, a uh, commission meeting, uh, we had approved participating in the uh, funding of the uh, extending of water to the Wonville area to the Coffee Ferry community. In uh, meetings this past week uh, with the water board and uh, follow on discussion, uh, we have um, discussed our agreement uh, to raise our portion of that uh, uh, cost of extending that water line uh, from $300,000 to $386,000 and to observe a pro rata share uh, of that expense from 66% for the county commission and 34% for the Jackson County Water Authority. Do I have a motion to amend the county's share of cost for the support of the extending water services to Wanville, Coffee Ferry Community from $300,000 approved on August the 16th, 2021 to $386,000. And I will amend the motion that you have in your package 
to include a statement of a 66, 34 percent share pro or pro rata share. Uh, I'll make the motion, but could also make a statement. Uh, it is our intent for this money to come from the uh, American Rescue Plan Act, correct? Yes. Um, when we were first approached with this, that was our intent. Still is our intent. We had a meeting with the, what is the acronym? I can't remember the, the county group that we we joined. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, IAC. IAC. Um, their suggestion was for us to put a block of money and water companies apply for grants out of that block of money. And there was some restrictions on where we could run water. They think that this will qualify, but I just want to make clear that we're not taking general fund dollars to to uh, expand water for these water companies. It, it is our intent to use the ARPA money. Our intent is to use the ARPA money, but in the previous uh, resolution that we approved, we stated that if that was not approved, we would consider using general fund money. On, but first on option this point, on because this. it needs to be done right. as soon as possible. But I don't want to set a precedent that we're we're expanding water with general fund dollars when we don't have the money to pay for roads. So I just want to make sure. That, I, that I agree. But in this case, I will say that we did we did offer the option that if that was ARPA money was not well, not approved, we would consider using I general the, fund. I make the motion, you know, um, that we partner in this regardless. But is it our intent to use ARPA money? Okay. So again, do we have a motion to amend the county's share of the cost for the support of extending water services to Wanville? Uh, from 300,000 to uh, approved on August the 16th, 2021, to 386,000 at a pro rate of share of 66%, 34%. And that would be consistent with the previous uh, action we took before the commission. I make that motion. Okay, we have a motion, a second. No, I second that. Okay, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, in our last meeting, we approved our 2022 budget. Uh, subsequent to that, we had a discussion in particular regarding one individual that uh, is in consideration of potential retirement. And so in that, from that discussion, we would uh, uh, make a, offer to make an amendment to the budget to allow time for that individual to make that consideration. So. Um, do I have a motion to approve the budget amendment for solid waste department? That motion amendment is in your packet. I'll make that motion. We have a motion, a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next on the agenda is a motion to approve the purchase of property at High Top as a loan to the county park for extension of the county park system and authorize Commissioner Venable to sign uh, the closing documents. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. We have a motion, a second. Yeah, I'll second that, I'm we sorry. We have a second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries. And the last uh, item in our new business uh, portion of the agenda is we uh, have a motion to accept the sanitation director's recommendation for the promotion of two sanitation employees from driver one to driver two. The letters are in your packet regarding those two individuals that are being recommended for promotion. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I, I will gladly uh, uh, <laughs> put a motion out to, to promote these two gentlemen from driver one to driver two. Do I have a second? I'll say We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, at this point, with uh, no further new business items, we'll move into our work session. We have uh, several uh, actions there uh, to discuss. First, uh, with the park, uh, dis disposing of or surplusing a more. So. Yes, sir. Uh, as, uh, as you recall, we were buying more. 
part, uh, which means now we have one that we can cycle out. Uh, so pretty much the end of its life, its life cycle, so we would have to plus and sell that. Uh, that one, get rid of it. Uh, on that note, uh, we did surplus the truck to two cruise a while back. That sale ended today. Uh, I was hoping we'd get $1,500 for it in 1998 forward, and we got 1426 I believe. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. close, very close. So this is just to sell that oldest mower uh, and uh, uh, be replaced by the new one. And, and the guys are very thankful for that new one, too. So. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, the only question I have on the surplus mower, does it match? Is it comparable to one that you have? Or is it a, is it a unique mower? Uh, no, it's not unique. The, uh, the two newest ones we have are John Deere Zero Turn Commercial, and the two oldest ones we have are uh, Hustler mowers. So the oldest one is a Hustler mower. Well, the question that I have, is there any value to retaining it as a as a source for parts in case actually actually no because we also have another hustler which is not operable that we have for parts okay it's the the old one we have for parts it actually has a fairly new engine but the hydraulic system's gone on it but we do have it left then at the plan is at this point is once the our oldest in the fleet will be that hustler then once it gets replaced, we'll sell it and the old parts customer okay. at the same time. Just, just, just from my own experience, I mean, to oh, buy yes. one or two parts for oh, the yes. for the hustler, you got sometimes. Yeah, and we we actually had to rob a part off of the old parts one last week for the one that we will be selling. Okay. So yes, sir. Okay. Oh, quick question. It's not mower related, but our cleaning contract bid. Are we? Have we opened bid on that? We opened bids this morning on that. One bid. Expect uh, uh, it on the next meeting then, maybe? Uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's see what our options are for that. Okay. Okay. Um, I was proposed that we add this to new business, uh, the surplus uh, more to the new business for approval at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, and, and, and one question. Go ahead, please. Uh, is there any benefit to waiting to the spring to put the mower up, or, or is it something that is irregardless of the time of year? Um, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll check into that to see, yeah. but uh, I, I don't think so at this point, uh, okay. especially right now with prices, what they are. Right. Of course, they may be higher come spring, they may be lower, but yeah. right now the market is okay. very hot. Right. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, Association of County Commissioners uh, of Alabama uh, Workman's Comp Compensation Self-Insurers Fund. Um, the, uh, the Workers' Compensation Self-Insurers Fund members have uh, has, uh, approved that the county members' refund and one-time longevity bonus uh, be, be offered. Uh, this occurs each year uh, at this time. So the Board of Trustees uh, evaluated the overall financial condition and they have considered this refund. Uh, this year, the trustees have approved a refund of $1.1 which will be distributed following the payment of all premium contributions. That's not just to us, that's across, uh, <laughs> across the, uh, the state. Uh, to be eligible for what we are calling the 20, they are calling the 2024 longevity bonus, a county commission must elect to continuous participation in the fund through at least September 2024. They have provided to us a resolution for consideration uh, to continue being a member of the fund and in, in being a member of the fund that we would also share in the distribution of, of refund. Um, any questions uh, regarding And to be honest, I must say then the answers are in the sheet that you have here that, uh, that we have available to us about uh, their execution of this program. No. If no. there are no questions or comment, I would pro propose that we take this to the new business uh, uh, agenda for our next meeting and to approve the resolution that has been, been provided to us. 
Also is uh, ACCA has um, initiated as a part of the American Rescue Plan Act funds management structure that they have put in place and an, uh, uh, an investment plan where you can put, we can put our monies collected along with the other 36 uh, counties that are involved in, in this uh, uh, work with the IEC into an investment program managed by or administered by uh, Morgan Stanley and Regions Bank. Uh, that investment program would uh, be invested in a certain number of uh, investment opportunities. Uh, that is shown in the packet that you have uh, in front of you. That would include uh, U.S. Treasury securities, limited U.S. agency securities, FD FDIC insured CDs, guaranteed commercial paper, collateralized bank deposits, money market mutual funds, and municipal bonds. Once you participate in this fund, um, there will be certain conditions that you must uh, comply with, uh, must appoint uh, individuals uh, from the county commission that uh, would authorize those persons uh, to uh, be designated to administer the funds for our county commission. Also, you must leave the funds in this uh, uh, fund account for a certain period of time before you can, can start withdrawing funds. It is an option of us whether to participate in this uh, program or not to participate uh, in this program. It is just an offering from ACCA and the IAC group. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, is is this is this something that um, obviously we can't we couldn't commit all of it to because it's coming out at varied points. So, would it be something that we could incrementally join or incrementally pull out, or is it, or do we have to say, okay, we're going to designate X percent of our money and it has to stay for the for the duration? The, the structure of the program is that uh, you would designate the amount of funds that you would put in, and from that initial designation, you would have to keep those funds in there for a, a period of time, and that's desig that period of time is stated in, in this packet. Yeah. At that point beyond that, you would be able to withdraw funds uh, for expenditures, okay. but you, it is not a matter of having to withdraw all funds or right. leave all funds okay. for, for was, a period of time. That was my question. Okay, very good. It kind of broke down on page five at some uh, different. But Jackson County, with our limited resources, if a county had plenty of money, I could understand you know them investing this money and then using their money and then replacing when the, when you know the you had the maturity of these funds. And, and get your money back plus the interest, but we have immediate needs and we don't have a lot of cash flow. So I'm not voting, but I'm, I'm just bringing up, you know, my opinion on it. Uh, my view, I would agree with you. Uh, also, that is, if you invest in this portfolio, we, we must recognize there are some risk uh, with that portfolio. Um, and over the course of the next uh, three years, I believe we, as you say, we do have specific uh, needs that we have uh, identified and we would be taking money out uh, periodically to fill those needs. I'm not sure this offers us a significant advantage over the current uh, in investment we have in, in our uh, bank savings uh, in terms of uh, revenue that we would gain in interest. Any other comments? I, I mean, for me, I just I just want to echo all. Of, I, we want to be slow and deliberate with with this ARPA money, uh, but but it also needs to be infused into into the county as soon as as, as we have a viable plan for the for the money. So I don't, I I think this is something that would that would tie our hands. Unlike the situation that Jason alluded to, if we had plenty of money to meet the needs of the county, it probably would be wise to. To secure this in some kind of longer term investment so i would propose that we set this aside we do not need any mo if we do not want to approve joining this fund we do not need to take any action from the commission 
Okay, next on the agenda is uh, from the Sheriff's Office. Um, uh, there was, a, and I will provide a statement from, uh, uh, from our Sheriff's Office uh, regarding uh, uniform bids. Uh, they did go out for bids. Uh, they got one bid offering. Uh, that, uh, that bid did not provide similar uniforms to that they currently have now, and so they are suggesting that uh, they do not uh, accept this bid, that they reject the bid. The statement is, uh, Dear Commissioners, during our recent uniform bid process, we received only one bid, which was from MAC Uniforms in Birmingham, Alabama. Although the bid was for a similar uniform, it is not the same brand that we have been wearing for many years. Also, since we did not request a sample to be sent for these uniforms, we are not able to compare the material, the quality, and the look of these uniforms. Since we still wear many of our existing uniforms, we will need the look to be the same. Therefore, we would like to reject this bid and rebid the uniforms. Any questions? I just Is that something that we need to, to, to move into new business and vote on uh, since, since it is a rejection of the bid? It's a rejection of bid, but we do have time to wait to the next okay. meeting to put it on the agenda to, to reject. Okay. And I would propose that we do that. Yeah, I mean, if they don't like their, their bid, that's... Mm. Okay. Uh, any other comments regarding this? Okay. Uh, next, uh, we'll move into uh, Public Works. Uh, we have a couple of updates uh, from our county engineer. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. I believe next on the agenda is County Road 17 presentation. So I have, I have a lot of slides to show you about the initial steps and the progress through construction and then finally completion of this project. As we work through them, I'll, I'll try to be brief. I know, that, I know there are a lot of slides, but as we work through, if you have questions, uh, please interject those. And if this is if this is more of a uh, non-formal discussion, it may provide for better information sharing. So I'll start with uh, what we all saw two years ago now uh, at the end of February with County Road 17. You can see this is the photo that we uh, were called out to and the damage after the substantial rainfall and storm. Uh, it was actually days of rain and we'll, days and periods of rain and we'll look at that a little further on into this but this was the initial subsidence that we saw when we showed up to the portion of county road 17. you can tell from the patched area of roadway this section of road was was no stranger to past repairs a little a little further on down the away you know a couple of days away more rain and there was more subsidence potentially that had ever been uh, at least in, in our record time um, we'll take a look a little further um, as we move on into the slides and you can see that actually the chart material in the roadway we feel there's evidence and what we discovered that that was also a substantial repair from years and years prior probably decades prior but you'll notice in the striations in the pavement uh, in the chunk that's exposed everywhere you see a gray line that's oxidized pavement so uh, that would lead us to believe that that was a roadway that saw some oxidation in use and then was later paved over as a patch to uh, you know level over a, a failure to some degree so you can see they vary in thicknesses um, even evidence of geotextile fabrics that were used as you know, possible means to slow or remedy the, the issue, but, but failures and, and proof of failures for years and years. So this is a, just a snapshot of February of 19, and this is all the rainfall data for that entire month. So 13.74 inches, you know, a reasonable amount would be in the five to four to five inch, pop, you know, potentially six inch range. And considering that half of these days there was no rain we can see um, the stimulant there that, that would cause something like this if there was an ongoing issue or issue, underground issue happening. So uh, from, from the time that this occurred in February, we knew that there was a lot of, a lot of questions and a lot of investigation that must take place. Uh, the geotechnical component to failures such as this 
is, um, you know, the cause is as complex as the solution oftentimes. So uh, we knew that s proper selection of a geotechnical firm and the work that they did would be critical in, in our next moves going forward. So after the selection of the geotech was made uh, and they began their work, um, geotechnical work, geophysical work was required. Um, and the geotechnical work, you know, soil sampling, the rock data, the different stratifications of soil and what's happening in different layers, obviously identifying the groundwater, the locations where all that occurs, but then also the geophysical. So the geotechnical gives us data at particular points. The geophysical information gives us an overall picture that is solidified or confirmed by some of those known locations with the geotechnical data. Obviously all that information is taken back to the laboratory, analyzed, and then final recommendation as well as mitigation recommendations are brought forward to us. So in those, it's the, the five key components here that are identified on the screen were, were the, the main takeaways from those months of work. We knew that high groundwater levels, um, as seems all of these that happen, um, there's a stimulant there, there's lubrication and aiding to the failure, so that's gonna have to be accounted for in our solution. Karst activity, so um, in, beautiful, in the beautiful county we live in, uh, with most caves of anywhere around, sinkhole formations, um, pinnacle bedrock, solution piping, uh, carbonate materials that, that form these mountain ranges are soluble to water. So the karst activity most likely from indications from above surface were a contributing factor to what has been going on for, for possibly decades. Subsurface stabilization, so uh, identified readily was the fact that uh, we had to identify the depth of, these, uh, of this failure and it would have to be remedied at whatever depth that was. So subsurface stabilization was going to be a must. Control drainage of subsurface water. So there's overland flow and there's large rainfall events that presents overland flow, but, but possibly more importantly is, is the water permeating through at whatever level and whatever depth there is. As a matter of fact, just upslope from this failure is a large spring that I've never seen not flow steadily. So we knew there was a lot of subsurface water happening uh, in, the, in the general area, if not exactly through this failure site. So after we have the geotechnical information and those critical components that we know we must address, um, this was a solution that was determined. And we'll look later at, at kind of the intermediate steps on how we got to where we were. But I'll just start with this. This is, a, this is one small takeaway from the plan set of the solution. Um, there's obviously different views and, and different major sections that would apply more. But I think this will give us all a good general sense of the repair method that was chosen. So I'll start at the top and kind of work down. You can see the dotted line um, that, that represents a suppressed subsurface or surface from where the failure zone is. The line above that, the solid black line, is, is the restored condition of the roadway and restored top elevation that is goal. And as we work down and the, the repair that is to be, the uh, left represents a uh, temporary cut slope that will be stabilized as we lower an excavation depth. And then making our way all the way down to the lower portion of that, it would be done in lifts and stabilized in lifts so that, so that once we achieve floor excavation depth, that we have a safe temporary cut slope to work, to work adjacent to. Uh, once that's achieved and we're at the floor of the excavation, then drains are inserted, as you can see represented uh, in this drawing. Those drains are on 10 foot centers and they will alleviate uh, water pressure uh, that, that has been identified as a culprit, and it will actually have a channel uh, by way of piping to flow all the way through our newly constructed field and exit on the downhill, downslope side of our repair. The, um, once, once floor elevation is achieved, the lines below the floor that you see are grouted columns. Those are four inch grouted columns that will be four, four foot on center both longitudinally and horizontally. So a four by four grid of 20 foot grouted columns will be throughout the entire length of this repair section. 
Just above that and above the piping, you'll notice a GCS load transfer platform. That is basically, if you view, if you view the grouting columns as bridge piers, then the GCS platform will essentially be the bridge deck. So that's constructed of 57 stone crushed aggregate as well as geotechnical fabric that will make up the individual layers and lifts. And uh, compaction is key on this and the GCS wall, but that will be the, essentially the foundation that all the other rests on. Um, just down slope from that, you'll notice the GCS wall. So that's, that varies in width, but it's approximately nine, nine feet wide throughout the entire length of this repair. And um, the dashed lines represent the lifts on how that is constructed. So the wire basket face, which we'll look at as we go, uh, will be on either side of that. And then the fill material that is between the cut slope and the wall, that will have to elevate as those layers progress and height is attained through the construction of this. So to the right, what used to be a tapered existing slope will be a vertical wall. Any questions about the plan repair before I move on? So we, we begin, uh, all carnage begins. Trees, trees come down, uh, lines come down, poles come down. Uh, it's a very busy site, you know, first order of business. We have to clear and grub, uh, remove utilities. Uh, utilities must be relocated for this planned excavation. You can just kind of see a snapshot of that in this photo. Some of that is out of the way at this stage. Uh, you can, you'll notice a new, a new power pole. Lines are relocated. Downslope clearing is taking place to some degree. Pavement is removed at this stage. And uh, we're getting ready to start the lifts of excavation in advance of the specialized geotech contractor mobilizing to do that cut slope stabilization to work our way down to the floor. Excavation uh, is starting to take place in phases here, and it'll, you know, as, as I mentioned, it's, it, the plan is to come out of lifts. Five to seven foot lifts uh, is a safe, is determined to be safe as far as a freestanding wall, and then stabilization will occur on that face to allow excavation to progress down. Utility water line uh, was encountered in this section of the roadway um, and had to be temporarily relocated and then permanently relocated once the repair was done. You'll notice, um, as I alluded to in the previous slides, you can see that there's a bituminous looking layer under, under a large section of what appears to be fill material. That is what we believe was a, a major failure that occurred sometime way before our records. Uh, there was apparently a major failure and then fill material brought in and then the layers of asphalt that, that we looked at closer in previous slides. So excavation is taking place here uh, in those lifts. Progression is being made with the excavation so that we have to work, you know, top side down to try to provide uh, positive drainage and we're using on-road trucks and everything is dry here and, and life is great. Um, you know, this, this past summer was a third, third wettest summer on record and the one before it was right there with it. So you'll see in photos things change. But we were making a lot of progress with on-road trucks and excavating and lifts in preparation for their mobilization. They were, they were removing as much as 60 loads a day uh, with three trucks and an excavator. And that's county folks. Let me mention that's it's not contract forces. That's that's our county man. Just another snapshot of the progress in excavation uh, is the is where making preparation for um, for that initial mobilization of our contractor. At this stage, uh, the first the first excavation lift is taken out full width. Uh, we established uh, positive drainage. The contractor is mobilized, and you can see the soil nails just starting to go into that face. Uh, you can tell just to the right of the track code the, the size of the cut that's been made and then that's been daylighted out throughout the entire width. There was a change of plan from the original plan of lifts. Uh, when, it, when it came to the field personnel versus our initial assessment on our plan, the decision was made that there was enough confidence in that freestanding slope that they would like to try to achieve floor elevation 
and progress that elevation forward. So um, we, we, we had to change gears in that and start excavating all the way down to the lower elevation so that they could work in that section on the wall and then also work on the floor. That saved them having to try to relocate large air compressor, grout pumps, grout, uh, water supply, and, a, and a various other items that they felt they felt uh, confidence enough that we could progress from the floor elevation forward. So that's what's taking place here. That meant uh, deeper excavation uh, versus lifts of elevation. And so we had to excavate a lot of this and lay it to the side to let them achieve their, their excavation depth, plus the fact um, their schedule. So they were, they were interested in working six days a week, 12 hours a day, and this would allow them more area to stabilize while we could progress excavation uh, ahead of them. You can see that here advanced. So we basically built them a bathtub, know, knowing that we were in for it. And uh, the excavation material, the soil is laid to the side and we're removing that as we go, but priority became getting them the depth where they could stabilize the wall and the floor. It's hard to see, but there is a pot in the bathtub that we've constructed for them, and and we know at first rain we're you know we're going to be faced with some issues. Uh, they were okay with working in muck. They were they were clear about that. Um, they they wanted plenty to stabilize and plenty to work on, um, even if it meant this fashion. So that's the way we progressed. The rain found us. Um, as I mentioned, a very very wet construction period that summer, and the one to follow. So the materials laid to the side at this stage, our primary goal is excavation. You'll notice in the background a rock outcropping. We'll take a closer look at the geophysical data on a little sneak peek of that that was revealed in there. The excavation uh, would obviously, and the new construction, would work around this rock outcropping that is basically bedrock. Um, Job one at this point is to get the excavation exposed where they can they can uh, work at the elevation they need to. And then uh, at this point, we're, we're really handicapped at the conditions on being able to remove that material. Material removal is progressing here. Uh, excavation is is as well to a point to where, uh, you know, they're, they're able to work. But we're really handicapped still by conditions on being able to remove this. We have to make a switch from on-road trucks to off-road trucks once we see that a drying time is going to be extended due to weather conditions. So we're faced with either stop work completely or change gears and change tactics and try to keep progression on the excavation and the material removal. Just just an idea of, of you know how bad the conditions were. The deeper we got with excavation, obviously the worse material, more expensive clays and unsuitable materials we encountered. Um, Off-road trucks were key in removing this, so that looks that looks bad in that photo, but for an off-road truck, you know, they could, they could pull right out of that. Another thing I'll mention is their agility in dumping and, and releasing the material once they're loaded. If we were using on-road trucks, you know, this type of material, we, we will, most likely would not even be able to get it out of the back of the truck, so the on-road trucks really, really uh, take care of that as well as moving material in the muck conditions. So drier conditions have found us at this stage. Uh, excavation is progressing as far as removing the material and then we've, we have plenty of exposure in the floor at this point and the face of the, of the cut slope to keep our contractor uh, plenty busy. I'll note that this, this track rig and they're working on a grouted column in the floor but you, you could watch this rig as it advanced and it would go through the different striations in the floor. So you, you could, it would go, the plume that you see there that's clearly limestone, um, it, would, it would exude nothing until it got to, to the rock, the soft sandstone, and then the, the plume would be brown. And there would be different variations of brown, and then once it penetrated through all that, and we got to the limestone bedrock, then a plume like, like what you see now, and the full advancement of the uh, of the drill rig would was coincide with that. So at this stage, we're still using off-road trucks and removing, and the uh, floor stabilization and the wall stabilization has occurred. Just a close-up of that four-inch grouted column. 
So these would be, um, you know, it would be gridded and marked out, then the, then the holes would be placed into the floor, into the bedrock, and then the grout would be pumped trimmy style. So it was, um, it was initiated from the bottom through pressure, and that would, that would either do, you know, one of two things. It would force the groundwater, if there was any in there, out of the top, or if there were voids encountered, that pressure would fill the void. So we had grout takes that were, that were what their measures would be normal, and we had some that would quadruple or be five times as much. So the karst activity that was identified early, early on by our geotechnical folks they were right on, and, and so was his technique in identifying those in different locations and filling those voids. This photo here is um, just, just kind of a final shot of the floor um, and, and the final area of muck excavation. You can see the, uh, there's just one final stage in, that, in the background that is to remain as a ramp that actually tapers up uh, for access and at the end of the identified failure and project. So final excavation stage is taking place here. Uh, in this photo you can see uh, the alignment of the floor of what will be the, the final stabilized floor. We're down to final excavation limits on this and there's still some stabilization to do on our temporary cut slope and some stabilization to do in the floor around the bedrock outcropping and we're doing final excavation um, work near that, that ramp in the background. This is basically the same stage, just a different different view, just to, to offer scale on the size of this excavation at this point, and a better shot at the, the rock outcropping and, and the work that's left to do. But this gives you some sense of the depth of the excavation that had to take place. And then uh, if, if you consider another 20 feet in those grouted columns for that subsoil stabilization on how deep this issue was identified to be. This is uh, upslope looking down and you can you know, just kind of take this all in for perspective. In the very background of the photo, they are starting construction on the load transport platform that we alluded to and uh, getting that initial layer constructed around the drainage pipes. Close up of that work taking place here, the first layer is essentially in and is progressing with the second. So once that um, entire layer to that height is complete throughout the, the total length of the project, that, that will be the load transfer platform. And the next step will be the GCS wall construction. So you can see the uh, drainage, drainage pipes as they come out of the wall and then are routed in that lower level of the load transfer platform and then where they exit the fill material and will drain away from the repair section. Another photo in this in this photo it's progressed, work has progressed in the wall. Um, the load transfer platform is complete and we're near construction on the wall. You can tell how the work had to go around the uh, bedrock outcropping as well as the drainage material. So um, there is a sneak peek and uh, this is back in our ERT information and MASW information. This is the geophysical information that you, some of you may recall from our initial, initial geotechnical um, correspondence on this. So I've put an arrow there on the nearest ERT pass where we can see that bedrock outcropping and we feel that, you know, it's possibly with the depths of our excavation that we possibly encounter that and it's, uh, it's accurate. This is just to show the, the methods of the GCS wall construction. Obviously, it's, it's built atop from the drawing. It's built atop the GCS um, load transfer platform, and it's the same construction technique that must take place. However, it's in layers, and it will build up the entire height of the fill material. But if, I'll start from the background and work forward. The baskets, the wire baskets, are placed on, at each edge uh, upon the layer that's completed below after the fabric is folded over. So first, the baskets are placed. Then um, midway in the photo, you'll notice a hardware cloth that has to be shaped uh, in, in an L form, the same as the wire baskets, and then attached by wire, and fastened inside the wire baskets. 
and then next is the fabric. So I'm I'm progressing toward the uh, the front part of the photo. The the fabric is placed um, in the baskets, and then um, the struts. As you can see, the struts on each side of the water basket, and there's a picture of the struts in the bag. They have to be placed at the appropriate spacing on the wire baskets and then the fabric must be slit or cut at each location where the struts can connect to the lower part of the baskets. So once the struts are in place, the fabric's in place, then it's ready for the aggregate and compaction. That must be done in two lifts. So one layer is placed in there, it's leveled by hand, it's compacted, and it's ready for the next lift. The fabric's folded over and the process is repeated to gain height. So very labor intensive very tedious um, and as you'll notice most of this work takes place at your at your feet where your feet would be so you're either squatting or bending um, in the longest stretches of this thing um, it would take them as long as two weeks to make one lift from one end to the other so extremely slow very labor in intensive on constructing this thing and, and getting it right Height is progressing on the wall, wall construction is progressing. We're, we're at a height here that we're, we're about max, and then we're going to have to figure something out worker safety-wise on handrails, which which we do in later slides. I'll show you those. But um, you can see uh, work's progressing well, and they at this stage they have their system worked out to where ever, everyone knows their job and they're, they're working uh, in harmony on, on making these lifts and, and building them. Another shot of the same, um, hop is progression and the, the wall continues. It continues until February, almost almost a year year to the to the day. Um, another large rain event. We'll we'll look at that as well. But um, cause the failure in the temporary cut slope, stabilized temporary cut slope um, near the north end or the upslope side of the repair section. And we began the Battle of the Bulge. You can see the nails that uh, have, fought, have failed in this area. There's mesh, there's chain link mesh that the nails are holding. And the fabric is basically a jute mesh, uh, just kind of a filler. So at this stage, we have a failure all the way back to the far extent of the nails and the furthest reach of the nails where it's failing. Just for scale. Um, there's a person in the photo standing way too close to the edge to, to suit me. It's not a county, not, not county personnel, but you can see how large this failure is and, and the cascading continues back actually beyond this photo here. Um, no, no encroachment on the wall at this stage, but it does creep closer before um, the solution for this failure and our failure can take place. So just kind of a snapshot of that, that's February uh, 21, two years later, I think I said one year later, two years later. You can see, you know, we've got a five, six days there where we've had continual rainfall, sizable events, and uh, like the other, we're 6.35 inches, but that's concentrated within just a few days. So that was a stimulant for this. So the plan is excavation uh, back to the, the top slope. Um, that, that will have to be muck, muck excavated and removed and then uh, re-stabilize what would be a new temporary cut slope and then a rock buttress is proposed to, um, to go in the place of that as well as down slope of our wall to offset those uh, driving forces of that slope. That's what the photo looks like aerial after the muck excavation has been performed. Um, you can see the, the mesh, the very top of the photo, you can kind of see the chain mesh peeking out and uh, where the repair has been done. And um, a massive amount of crushed stone had to go in for that buttress. I will add, I will add this time that, you know, um, this was beyond our right away limits. It was really beyond the scope that we identified of what we could even work within. Our, our contractor, our chosen contractor, um, totally took responsibility for this 100%. They, mobile, they remobilized all their equipment. 
they remobilize their grout pumps, their men, their excavator, the track rig. Um, they hire local contractors for the removal and for replacement of the stone, and they restabilize this section um, at no cost to this project. So thousands of tons of stone went in this uh, at literally no cost to the county. So this meant we were beyond our limits and we had to reach out and have landowner networking again and permission to do this work on right away, which was granted. And we have a special thanks for that individual later on, but that was also, they, they uh, asked for no compensation for that. So that allowed the progress of this to move forward. And uh, this to a minor setback, I would call it, but um, it, it really helped out in the end with that buttress material being <clears throat> at the end of our failure site. So that's a ground level shot. Uh, the buttress is complete. Uh, we're, we can go back to work now and, and finish our wall elevation. And then the plan is to continue that buttress on over uh, the end of the wall. Basically, we would, uh, we would be able to stop sh a little short of the termination of our wall and in place have that buttress. And a lot of that work's been done in this photo, the end of the wall being capsulated before, before, um, before final, final construction of this is complete on the buttress. And then um, the fill material is still to be done between the GCS wall and the top slope. And then finalizing the GCS wall is remaining. A lot of that's taking place here. You can see where the different layers of the GCS wall is terminated. The baskets encompassed uh, the different layers, and, and that's what stopped that elevation. And it just stacked in tiers uh, until we reached the final elevation of the wall. Butchers is complete here. <clears throat> the roadway elevation is being roughed in, and then base material is going in to uh, choke out some of the large stone. Base material is in at this point and uh, roughed in. And um, the next stages will be guardrail and then pavement layout. You can see that work here. Butcher's complete, base material complete, <clears throat> pavement layout's complete, and guardrail work is complete. And then a final shot of the uh, wearing surface uh, atop the base material placed, and the shoulder uh, aggregate is in place in this photo. So taking a look at the timeline, um, we said two years, but obviously there wasn't two years worth of work. March of 2019, uh, late February was when the failure occurred. March to May <clears throat> was consumed with on-site investigations, damage reports, uh, reconnaissance on what all kind of failures we had and getting a geotech selected. RFP was put out um, and a geo different geotech for evaluating the selection was made on that. That happened in May. They worked from May to September on all the stages of the geotechnical and geophysical lab analysis mitigation work that we talked about, mitigation recommendations. And that final geo report was presented to us in September of 2019. Once we had that, then we had the uh, components we needed to put out an RFP for uh, competitive sealed proposals, uh, different from sealed bids, but competitive sealed proposals for specialized repair work uh, in that RFP, it was constructed so that we could be included in this repair plan going forward uh, intentionally. So uh, the repair proposals were open November of 2019. Once we had the proposal and the plan, then we had the framework for the dollar amounts that would be fairly absolute. And that allowed us to proceed with the agreement with ALDOT, which occurred in January uh, 2020. So. We have to take our approved plan, our approved contractor, submit to ALDOT for their concurrence, uh, and then on to FHWA for their concurrence. And so that agreement uh, was signed January 20. Contractor was officially selected after that in January of 20. And then um, that allowed us, once we had our footprint and agreement with ALDOT funding, we could start with right away acquisition um, and environmental environmental approval. So I haven't talked any about the downslope part of this, but obviously we're well well beyond right away limits there. 
the clearing and grubbing that had to take place due to the fact that excavation went out to daylight and, and present a free drain uh, floor on this. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll get into that landowner, but that all had to be negotiated as well as a place to waste all this material that was coming out. So that happened to be the same landowner, a very generous landowner that allowed this, this project to not experience delays due to that. He actually had to go to the extent of signing a deed over to us to satisfy uh, federal requirements. We represented him. We had no intention of recording it, and we didn't. But he had to, he had to go to that extent, and, and he did, and requested no compensation. So um, large thanks to, to him on that. Aldo authorized the project funding in March of 2020. So um, after, project, after the project funding was authorized, then all we needed was construction, authorization for construction. So after the environmental documents were clear, they were satisfied with that right away in their plan. They had FHWA concurrence, then they initiated for uh, work to start on June, and that's when we started. So our crews were on site. That's the photos you saw. Clearing and grubbing, utility relocations, asphalt removal. And then from June 20 to September 21 uh, were all the stages of construction, which I showed you in this presentation. So 15 months, basically. Um, we had estimated initially 12 months for the duration of the project, and um, it took 15 months. So considering we had a substantial delay with COVID, uh, very wet summer, and then our, our um, additional failure within our site, um, they, I felt like they did a really, really outstanding job. So uh, special thanks. Mr. Lamaster, James Lamaster, he was the property owner for Downslope and the waste site. <clears throat> Interesting fact, uh, Senate Bill 640, hard to read, it was first read uh, July 11th, 1979. It, it later became known as the Lamaster Bill. This is the same gentleman that created public works. So prior to this time, we were a captive county and controlled by the state. So it was the Lamaster Bill that gave the county control Public Works Department. It's the same, the same man that that allowed us to excavate his property, remove his trees, uh, place our material on his land. And uh, when the when the, the topic of compensation came up, he said, uh, "I just want to help. I want to help our neighbors, and I want to help the citizens." So he was helping us then, and he's still still helping us uh, today. So a big thanks to Mr. James Lamaster. Dirk Funderburg, that's our upslope neighbor. Once that failure occurred, we had to have permission um, to proceed, and we needed that rapidly. So Funderburg reviewed our documents, reviewed the site, and um, allowed us to proceed with what we needed to do. General Joe Stringham, um, he, he was our neighbor. Um, very forgiving neighbor, very nice neighbor. Probably helped us more in our PR campaign than we helped ourselves. So. Uh, thanks goes out to General Hill Stringham for that. Cost to date, 1.286-101.23. says cost to date because we're not complete. We actually have um, permanent striping, permanent markers, and then some dollars to recoup from our folks uh, applying that shoulder material as uh, some of the last stages that will be on that final estimate. And uh, I think this is the only ribbon cutting that I've been a part of where we actually had everyone so maybe that was a sign of, of the project being complete and, and everyone ready to close that chapter. But we had full participation this day, and all is well that ends well, I say. So that's the end of my presentation. I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, John. Okay. Right. Thank you, John. Jonathan, I, I just want to commend you. I know that you got lots of calls on this. We obviously got lots of calls on this. I, 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 think, I think this will go as testament to one of the best things that, that, that's been accomplished because I firmly believe that, that this portion of County Road 17 is, is, is fixed. And uh, very, very, very thankful. You guys don't get enough kudos for the, for the great work y'all do, but this, this project is the embodiment of what, what can be done. And so we're very appreciative of you on that. Thank you for those comments. I appreciate that. I hope it is fixed. Um, the men, the men were very adaptive in this. You know, they they handled a lot of things that they don't normally encounter on, on a daily basis, from production excavation 
um, constructing a GCS wall, that's never been done. So they were able to change gears, um, really take this task head on, and do a lot of things that monetarily benefited the county to set us up for these other repairs that we know are coming. So one of the most important stats on this, and I failed to mention it, zero accidents mm -hmm. occurred on this project from day one to the end. So um, that's that's all the work they have done. All, all the things you mentioned, that's 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 them, not me. They did this project and they did it safely. So I'm I'm so grateful for that. Okay. Jonathan, thanks. Please Thank pass you. on uh, our thanks to all of your folks for the great job that they did here. Um, I know you have a couple more items on the agenda, so next is speed limit request. Okay, uh, hopefully hopefully there are two resolutions in your packet for your consideration. One is for County Road 451 and one is for County Road 26. And any time that uh, this, this comes to us by citizen request, but any time we investigate this, and the speed limit is uh, determined to be unsafe at below 45, then a resolution is required. So our investigative work is by engineering method with this, and the primary uh, the primary measure for this is 85th percentile speed. So um, that, that work has been done, and the speed limit that is proposed is in each resolution. So between now and, and next meeting, if there are any questions or you'd like to review these locations, um, please do so. Okay, uh, let me ask you any questions. Yeah, my, my only question is uh, proper advertising and, and signage going up for this. I mean, I, I, I assume that that's, that's part of any, any uh, speed change, that this, this will be properly advertised and, 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 and signage put up for yes. these areas. No advertisement to my knowledge, but posted speed limits go up after approval. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Next on the agenda is uh, lead mechanic job description. Uh, we do have a job description in our packet. Any comments, uh, uh, Jonathan? So this is just... Um, the final stages of what was approved in the budget process. That position was created then, but there needs to be an accompanying job description for that change. So um, this has been presented to the personnel department and we have their concurrence. So please, please read through and make sure there's no changes that are needed. And if, uh, we ask for your consideration at the next meeting if this can move forward. Okay, next, ad advertise for assistant county engineer. It is with sadness and joy that I announce the upcoming retirement of our assistant county engineer. Ms. Charity Manning began her career with Jackson County in 1997 after earning her Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering and passing the EIT exam the same year. In 2002, after passing the Principles and Practice exam and earning her PE designation, she was then promoted to assistant county engineer. Charity has held numerous certifications and licenses asphalt technician, concrete technician, stormwater qualified credential inspector, herbicide applicator license, bridge inspection license, all the required credentials to run the entire department and has multiple times while serving as county engineer and assistant county engineer on three different occasions. Charity has served under five different county engineers and six different county commissions. She performed so well that she was in fact asked to be the county engineer but declined. You see, Charity is more than an excellent engineer. She's a wife and a mother of two, and despite plenty of other opportunities outside the county, she chose us. She could have worked and excelled for any private firm, accepted in invitations from Aldoc, because she had those, or invitations from other counties, she had those too. But she chose Jackson County because it was her home and the county she loves. Because of her service, we will always be grateful and better off. So congratulations, Charity, in reaching your milestone of 25 years of service and to your upcoming retirement. So with that announcement, it is also a request for your consideration, and that is the backfill Cherry's position. It's critical to our operation. Uh, it's, it's a professional position, uh, you know, slightly different than, than the others we have. But, but our intention is for overlap to happen with her. Um, it don't 
don't give us a lot of time to February 1st, but it gives us some time. There's, there's no way we can transfer 25 years of knowledge on, on everything she has, but uh, for the sake of continuity of operation, we ask for your consideration in backfilling that position. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Yeah. Uh, so, with the overlap, do you have the, the, the budget allowance there with salaries to, to be able to do both? So if you ran that long term, you know, that would be that would be something to look at. But as early stages as we are in the, in the you know, year, I don't see an issue there. Um, to my knowledge, we've never overran our budgetary items. So we have a lot of positions yet to fill that are vacant. It's going to take us a lot of time to work through those. So I think that would, will give us some breathing room and allow them for this. Okay. okay. Any other comments, questions? Well, I've only been here for a short time, but I must also say that in that short time, she has certainly demonstrated that, that she is a true professional in, in her skill and background and what she's done. So, she, she will be very difficult to replace. Yes, she Absolutely. will. Thank you, Tim. Not impossible. Uh, I okay. would propose that uh, in the public works section that uh, we put on our new business agenda for our next meeting the uh, speed limit request, the lead mechanic job description, and advertisement for assistant county engineer. Concur. Uh, okay, with that, uh, we'll, we'll move into reports from the staff. First of all, county administrator. He's on vacation, isn't he? <laughs> okay. Uh, county engineer, anything else? One last thing, I promise this is the last one. So it's uh, the photo looking slide, yeah, hopefully. I need to report on the last sale that took place on our 2020 Kenworth T 800 dump trucks. Uh, check was received and it may be attached to your slide, maybe not. $584,325. Those were 2020 model trucks that we had the replacements for. Uh, we paid 149702 each for those trucks. 449106 was the total paid. That leaves a difference of 135219 after commissions, uh, cleanup costs, etc. So um, we drove the trucks a little longer than anticipated due to the fact that the replacements were lagging. Um, and they were near 20,000 miles on these trucks versus uh, typically lower, so that 135219 was was profit, if we can say that, for the three trucks. So just just a little affirmation in the rotation program. Love it. Thank okay. you. Well, I'd like to add on these three trucks. We've done this at least one year before you came with us. How how many years have you been here? Six. Six years. So we've done this at least seven years. Never lost money a single year, but this is the most that we have ever gained, the $135,000 that uh, I'm, I'm tickled. I appreciate your efforts in, in researching and doing and making sure we have replacement vehicles uh, before we let our others go. And I know that's gonna be very difficult in this coming year due to availability of the trucks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. So this is phenomenal. And it's it's a lot less to do with me and more to do with the circumstance. Um, the rotation does work. And it's because it's a marketable product that we can use and have an advantage on buying and then turn it over. Um, but this is a, this is availability, supply and demand that's driving this cost. Um, and this is insane, you know, just to, to turn a profit like this. So we know availability is probably going to be an issue going forward. Um, we're, we're hearing that already. And we know prices will increase, so let's let's just enjoy it while we have it. <laughs> the next time may not be. May not be okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Any other comment? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jason, Jonathan, uh, County Attorney. I don't have any Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Director of Parks and Recreation, Mr. Coggins. Any comments? Additional comments? Okay. With that, we'll do. Move to comments from Commissioners uh, District 4, Commissioner McBride. I'd like to echo what, what everyone said, Jonathan, about the hard work you guys put in the 17. We really appreciate that. And I uh, you know, went that extra mile to make it, uh, to, to repair the road and do it right. And we will hopefully never have to address that section of the road again. 
just want to say remember everyone affected by the virus and your prayers. We've had employees affected and keep their families in your prayers. And y'all continue to, to, to social distance and do what's necessary to be safe. Commissioner Buckner, District 3. Yeah, uh, super excited. Uh, this, this past weekend was, was kind of a showcase of the best of Jackson County. I was, I was extremely uh, impressed with all of the activities that were going on in and around uh, the county. Uh, just just wonderful, wonderful times. Uh, we're, we, are, we are finally figuring out the way to, best, to put our best foot forward. And so uh, kudos to everybody involved in this weekend's uh, uh, activities in and around the square. It was just, just, just a good, good time. Uh, and also, I want to I want to give uh, uh, recognition to the previous commission for the work that they did on County Road 17 because there was a strong foundation that we came in. A lot of hard decisions had to be made, and they dealt with a lot of negative press on the time that it was taken and things that were completely out of our control. And so, I'm I'm very thankful that to appear in that ribbon cutting. But there was a lot of people involved on uh, in this in this capacity to allow that to happen and I hate that they weren't weren't uh, part of that but um, just glad to be here and thanks thanks for the comments district 2 commissioner Venable I don't have anything to add tonight mr. chairman thank you I have uh, just one comment to make um, this past Friday we lost uh, a dear member of our county family miss Treba Higdon uh, passed away complications of uh, COVID and uh, her funeral was this uh, this past Sunday. Um, greatly done. A lot of folks who turned out to, for that. But let's remember her family as uh, they go through this period of time in their life. She uh, left husband, daughter, and a son of 11 years old. Uh, so please think of her and her family. So with that, uh, our next meeting is scheduled for October the 25th, uh, 2021. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I make that motion. We adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.